Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Maureen Kelly. She's involved in the healing ministry. Welcome, Maureen. Thank you, Geraldine. It's great to have you in the show. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you. Yes, I'm interested particularly in your faith journey. Um, tell me about how you got to that renewal of faith. Okay. Um, it was a slow journey for me, unfortunately. I always believed in God. Um, was always encouraged to go to church, even though mum and dad, I'm um, one of three children, the oldest of three girls, mm -hmm. and mum and dad encouraged us to go, but they didn't actually go to church themselves very much. But So we continue to go to church, um, went right through my teenage years, lots of questions about mm -hmm. things I'd been taught over the years, but continued to go. Mm. Didn't think about God very much. I just always believed that he was. Mm. Um, got married, got married in church, uh, went on to have children. Um, life wasn't too bad. Towards maybe the eighth year, my husband, mm. who drank quite a bit when I first met him, really? but had been fairly good and then somebody else came into his life and the drinking started again. So oh, no. things weren't really mm. good and I got pregnant with my third child and, mm. you know, wasn't all that good yes. and so my sister-in-law at the time came to me one day encouraging me to go and speak to a lady at her church oh. and I went I, mean, yeah. I was pretty desperate actually at that yeah. point and I thought if somebody could help me and uh, she presented me with a little booklet you might have heard of it the four spiritual laws oh. I'm not sure if it actually is um, in print these oh, days right. what's what was in it it was uh, well, it was a book about how to know God. Mm. And in that were these diagrams of two circles. Uh -huh. And in one circle, Jesus was sitting on, there was a chair in the middle of each circle. Oh, yes. Jesus mm. was sitting on the chair in one and self was sitting on the chair in the ah, other. Ah, yes. I so the see. circle that Jesus was sitting in, everything was so peaceful and in harmony. And the other one was like chaotic. And <laughs> right. so she asks me the question, you know, which one represents your I life? See. Well. Uh -huh the one that was chaotic and uh, which one would you like to, you mm -hmm. know well, that was a bit of a no-brainer really of course yeah. I would like it to be like that and then she showed me a prayer that I could pray uh, at the time I don't know why but I was just hesitant to pray mm. that prayer and so I walked out of there with mm. a bit to think about but I went back mm. about a week later and yes. prayed that prayer which was a prayer of asking Jesus to into come into life. my life mm. come into my heart no real understanding of what that meant. The, the book went on to, you know, say that um, it, it had an illustration like a, a train and Jesus was the, the engine and, you know, there was oh, these yeah. um, carriages that were faith, trust, or feelings and faith and trust, something like that I don't really oh, remember. Yes. But um, the, the change that I really noticed in myself um, was that all of a sudden I had this ability to love my mother-in-law oh. and who at, you know, at that time she was quite a, a hard lady. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that was something that I noticed that was different. So oh, I knew yeah. something had happened. I'd never There's read a change. Bible. Mm. Um, I got a Bible and I did start to read the Bible. If I tried to talk about this new experience, I got shut down. They, uh, my husband oh, really wasn't um, into didn't it. Really, in fact, they made a mockery of me and oh, they didn't call me no. names. You know, like if I like I can't remember now, but if I started to say anything, they would just sort of shut me down. Oh, so no. I'd sort of read yes. the Bible when no one yeah. was around, and but never really had an understanding of mm. exactly what inviting Jesus into my life meant. Yes. Yeah, so did you uh, start to talk to God of a personal relationship? Jesus? Yeah, I, I did talk mm. to him, but and I guess he seemed a bit closer to me mm. than what he had before. Probably I'd never thought much about Jesus, mm. thought about God, yes. but not really as God ah. as a father. Ah, right. But at that point, I began to talk to Jesus yes. and life continued. Yeah, so you started going to this church, this new place? Or? No, not at that point. I stayed mm. in that, that church I'd grown up in and was, oh, I had yeah. the baby, I had my little girl. Oh. I had two boys before that. I had oh, my, wow. my daughter uh, and 
probably she was about four when everything went wrong and the, the marriage oh. broke down. We ended up going through a divorce, which was yeah. uh, not good. Um, kept up. Well, actually, at that point, I walked away from church. Mm. Um, I withdrew from everybody that was connected to With God, it. connected oh. to church. I felt and connected to your husband or your uh, ex-husband. Well, mm. he had told everybody to mm. leave. Mm. Me not have anything to do with me. Oh, no. There was only one friend actually that. That's awful that stayed, breakups. That stayed a friend, yeah. Mm. So I felt very unworthy. I felt mm. that I wasn't worthy to walk into a church. And oh no. It was yeah, a few yeah. hard years yes. there. And then I remarried much too quickly, mm. and that that had its own challenges. I yes. you know I took a lot of baggage into that marriage and. My husband, who's still my husband, we've been married almost oh. 36 years oh, now. Oh, wow, so yeah. you did get through it. <laughs> we, we, we've got through it. Um, he'd not even been in a, a real re a relationship. So here he was with this woman who's <laughs> come out of a, a marriage and has got three children and yes. a lot of baggage. And so we so started that, off that mm. journey with, yeah, with hard years. Yes. A lot of uh, tension. Um, yes, and with, we did both your attended husband church. Have, oh, he had yeah, faith he, too. He had the same, mm. yeah, he came out of this, you know, he had the same church. So we were going to church. Oh. Um, then his mum got sick oh. and he moved in with me. Mm. So that, that put me in even a worse place. Oh, I just no, thought, had I, I, thought I was on challenge. the way to hell actually because oh, no. I was divorced. I was, to me, I was living in sin. Oh, you hadn't remarried yet at that stage? No. Oh. Okay. No, so and you were going to a new church at we that stage? We were still going to the new ch church. church of our child. We were in oh, a Catholic childhood church still. at the time. Oh, yeah. right. So that's, yeah, that's all the challenges. So, yeah, yeah, I felt so very... You, oh, yeah. I just didn't know journey. where life was going. Really. Yes, and, yes. Um, we did get married. We yes. did get married. Eventually. Um, eventually yeah. we got married. Still continued mm, yes. going to church. Um, yeah, so it's been... A, a lot of challenges for you, but obviously challenges. the fact that you're here means you, you survived. We have survived. Um, we're going to go for a break now. Okay. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Maureen Kelly. She's involved in the healing ministry and is sharing her faith journey. Welcome back, Thank Maureen. Thank you, Geraldine. Now, you were sharing about you going to your second marriage and how that was pretty challenging because you had three children um, still you were kind of keeping in touch with, and then you had... Um, this sort of new marriage where your husband was adapting to the stuff that you had gone through already and, and it was a challenge for you and you continued to have faith yes. through all that. Yes, <laughs> yes. So how, how, how did you pull through all this time? I did pray a lot. I, ah. I did, I'd got to that point where Jesus was becoming a bit more real to me hmm. and uh, actually I, I would just backtrack to when I had Fiona, uh -huh. which is Michael and my child, when she was six months old, I had to have a hysterectomy. Oh. And I was in the Mercy Hospital. Mm. And I had cried out to the Lord several times over the years because he still didn't seem mm. as real as I knew he could be. Mm. I guess that's the way to put it. And as I laid in that bed, I was looking at a cross on the wall mm -hmm. in the hospital and I really cried out one more time. Mm. And it was at that point, actually, that things really began to, to change for me, that he really became real to me, mm. that as I read the Bible, especially the Psalms, I mm. began to feel a lot of strength, mm. peace. Yes. And so that, that carried me through yes. times when I didn't have my other children with me just knowing that he was looking after them. Yes, so you weren't, uh, you didn't have custody of your children? Not all the time, no. Oh, no. that would have been hard. Yeah, yeah. Was that a difficult decision to make? Because sometimes 
you know, I think people assume that women usually have custody, but right. things are changing these days. Mm. It was very difficult, Geraldine. It was, I felt at the time that it was the right thing to do. To give custody to your I had friends yeah. saying things, you know, to me about if I did, if I took the children away from my husband that he would, you know, do maybe something silly or... Oh, really? At to the time. You or something. All mm. right. So you did it for safety and also... Well, I thought they would be better off. I was struggling financially. to get a ah, job. Ah, right. uh, I was struggling to find somewhere to live and I had solicitors saying, um, you, you need to be able to prove that you can look after the children. Oh, right. And so I'd gone for interview after... I'd been out of the workforce mm. for 13 years. So I'd actually worked for my mm. father and also when I went for interviews, I either mm. said... I had been out of the workforce for 13 years or told the truth. Mm. I had a job, but my marriage broke up and I lost my job. Mm. So I t told the truth. And one day I'm, I lived with my mum at the time at this oh. point and phone calls were going to mum mm. from these interviews. And mum said to one of them one day, you know, why won't you employ her? Yeah, She'd be a, a good worker. Yeah. And they said I was an emotional risk. Oh, because no. I was going through this divorce. divorce. So, and how old were the children at the stage? Um, five, Megan, uh, Megan was five, Craig probably about eight. Oh, and, that's awful. Oh, no, yeah, nine you would have missed and 11, them so maybe. much, isn't it? It's a long time ago now. Yeah, I would have missed them hard. so much. It was hard. And so I felt, you know, he had a, he, he his, the father was, he was a good father. And this was the thing. We went to um, yeah. the family law court counsellors and it wasn't that, either of us were bad parents mm. but they were going to put the children like ask the children who they wanted to live with and I just couldn't bear that really I thought that's okay. such a hard decision for children to make to decide so you, so you made, I the, made decision. the decision oh. to give him custody well did the your daughters were they upset from that decision you made well she was so young really oh, and okay. um, when I left the house, mm. I went to live with my mum. Mm. I sat the children down and spoke to them and two of them I took with me to mum's, never mm. thinking that I wasn't going to go back actually, but mm. I never ever got back to the house and, yeah. and the divorce went through. So, mm. yeah, there was a, mm. a rift, for, I guess, with my elder son for a while. Yeah. We're okay now. Oh, that's We're good. Okay you now, so. Yeah, very hard years. Mm. Very and hard what years. you said that the Psalms helped you, which particular psalms helped you in the bible uh, the 23rd psalm <laughs> the lord everybody's favorite yeah. you know the, um, the lord is my shepherd but just ones where he speaks about he'll you know he trust be still and although i think that's not the psalm but there was just that sense of this is a, a god i can trust mm. this is a god that will look after me this is a god that will look after my mm. children mm. and i had faith that things mm. would work out. Mm. They didn't work out as quickly as <laughs> I wanted, but just that sense of peace, that That's sense good. of knowing that there's somebody much bigger. Much did anyone than judge me. you for not having custody of the kids? Oh, yeah. How did you deal with that judgment? As I say, it's a long time ago. It's hard to think yeah. back, but yes. um Yes, yeah, so that the mm. sense of God's mercy and the salvation I come think to so. you. I yeah. And I, the fact that I really believed at the time that I had made the right decision. Right. Yeah, you did it for the best of the children because mm. you said your husband was not a bad husband, no, but it was more no. that you didn't get he along. He did drink, and I did find out later oh, on that okay. you know those, the children had some difficult years. Oh, okay. So in hindsight, if if I had it to do over, oh yeah, you I didn't know would about that aspect. Yeah. Mm. So you did. You made the best decision yeah. you knew at the time. That's right. I mean, once my youngest son came to live with us, as soon as he turned fourteen. Mm. Um, no, they were difficult years, but we we got through it. Yeah, yeah no, we got through it. Yeah, and you were talking about the fact of Father God. That that's been something strong that's helped you get through your life. What can you explain about your own relationship with your father mm -hmm. and how that's how your healing occurred with mm -hmm. Father God? Well, I didn't relate to Father God for a long time actually, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a, um, a close relationship with my dad. Dad, Mum, and Dad got married at young. They mm -hmm. went away for a weekend, and then my father went off to the war. Oh. And he came home one weekend on furlough and I was conceived. Uh -huh. Then I was 10 months old before oh, he came right. back. So we never ever had 
that bonding. I see. And then mum and dad had some difficult years because I often remember mum saying that dad went away a boy and came back a man. Oh, right, yes. And yeah, and that's uh, challenging the, the trauma of war itself, mm. isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's very interesting, but we need to go for a break now. Okay. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Maureen Kelly. She's involved in a healing ministry. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Geraldine. Um, you were sharing about that healing you had with Father God, God, the Trinity being Father, Son, and Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, and how that had a connection with your own relationship with your father. Could you share more about that? I, my sister lived in Warwick, uh, Warwick in Queensland at mm -hmm. the time and I was visiting with her and she went to a, a Pentecostal church mm. and I went along to church with her and I'd never ever had anybody have like, a word for me if you know what you know that's like is. an inspirational word like the pastor yeah. actually called me out well wow, specifically and you. specifically wow. and the very first words that came out of his mouth were my daughter wow and then he had this incredible word you know, but I just wept and yes. wept and wept, and that that did that so was it. It's like the word of God specifically spoke to your heart directly. Absolutely, wow, true inspiration. Absolutely, and mm. uh, somebody actually came up and asked me if I'd got born again, if I'd had my like spiritual experience <laughs> that day because I was so moved emotionally. Wow. But Father God became very real to me. Yes, so at, at in the past point. you, so initially you related to God like you related to your father, a little bit more distant. Oh, and And harsh. after that, it's more closeness. Much. Yeah, wow. Much, yeah. And what were the steps between your father that you and your father had to do to help the healing? That was a slow journey as well. Mm. Um, this might not make sense, but really there's been a bigger healing since Dad passed away mm. than even beforehand. Yes. We, we got along, mm. but we were not never, ever really close. Mm. Yeah. yeah, did you have to um, come to a feeling of healing of forgiveness or, you know, it did, or was there a kind of um, belief that about, your, about Father God because of your dad? Not a real belief about Father God. Um, from that time that I, I heard those words, my daughter, mm. I felt very connected to Father God. Mm. I reached a point where I understood that my, fa my, my earthly father had loved me as much as he yeah. could. Oh, okay. And were you able to forgive your father? I was. I oh, was. Did that make a difference, forgiving your father? I, it did, but that was after Dad passed away, yeah, actually. So it took a while before you... Because so often, sometimes in the church, people say, oh, forgive such and such. And, and some of people um, don't really fully forgive until later on, mm. isn't it? And it's a journey, he, right. forgiveness, isn't yeah. it? To be honest, I wasn't aware that I'd held a real unforgiveness oh. towards Dad. I mean, mm. I just always felt things were different mm. for me mm. compared to, say, my younger sister who got on very well with oh, Dad. Right. But I just thought that's the way it was. Uh-huh. Um, it was when I began to experience prayer ministry for myself that mm. I understood there was some mm. blockages and hindrances ah, there. That, right. Mm. So were the blockages, the, uh, were, was the belief, the perspective you had about your dad mm. 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 and also the perspective you had mm. about God. So as you became to know the truth through the Bible mm. and prayer you, yes. and also those words of knowledge or that man speaking like as Father God speaking to you, it all became a reality. It mm. did. One of the, the things was I never felt my, that my father heard me. Mm. I tried to talk to him about how I felt mm. and that I didn't feel understood or mm. that I always felt that he never really heard what I said. Yes. And it's amazing how 
Sometimes even though, though our own fathers might say, yes, I was listening, but sometimes it's our own filters that we think mm -hmm. they're not hearing us. And then because we believe they're not hearing us, we shut yeah. down and then they shut down and it all just compounds, mm -hmm. isn't it? That I didn't please him either. Oh, yeah. Like it didn't matter what I did, mm. it was never good enough. Yes. Right up until the week before he died and I you actually had, had a oh. chance to say something about that. Oh, wow. And he was surprised he he couldn't see that he'd been like that so yeah yeah you know, so it was sad. never purposeful or intentional yes yes and mm. it's interesting so your dad actually listened to you before he passed that, away that last week oh mm. sometimes i mean i know i don't know about you but i wish i said more things of truth to mm. my family before they passed away because mm. sometimes we think that people have these per perceptions but it may not be true so mm. it's always good to check isn't it well, it was a silly little situation. He'd <laughs> sent me home to get pyjamas and different things. And when I came back, they were the wrong ones. Uh -huh. And I just said to him, it wouldn't have mattered what I brought back. Yeah. They would have been the wrong ones. Oh. I said, you know, if my younger sister had brought these back, they would have been fine. And he was like, what do you mean? Yeah. And got yeah. that opportunity to... Oh, that's good that you mm. shared that. You know, mm. it's a real connection where you can share this. Yeah. And it's a, you know, dying and all that's a real ch chance of reconciliation, yeah. isn't it, and healing. It so it's, it's wonderful. I hear you're involved in the healing ministry yourself now. Yes, yes, yeah. that's been a journey. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. And how did you get involved in the healing ministry? My daughter actually did a course in a church Mm. Um, over in the eastern suburbs and said, I think this would be good for you. I did oh, the course, oh. joined a team um, that was involved with, with prayer ministry. Mm. And uh, that's not operating at the moment. But then another door opened at a church over this yeah. side of town and I'm yes. helping out with a friend there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's um, fantastic. Yeah, because there's... Um, there's things deeper that affect our our perception of God and our and our relationships, isn't yeah, it? But very much. but knowing our subconscious things, which is a lot of inner healing, isn't it? Helps us once we're aware of that, those barriers start to fall. Mm, that's right. Which is fantastic. Yeah. Ha it happening in your life. Um, yeah. So I do hope that you can come back next week to share about your, you know about the involvement in healing ministry. Would love to do that. Oh, that would be fantastic. And for people who might be interested in healing ministry, what are the different groups that they might need, could go to? Well, I'm helping out at one church in Blackburn Road. Oh, great. I'm not sure of the suburb, actually. Is it yes, sorry, um, in yeah, Blackburn, 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 yeah, I think. Um, I'm also involved in healing rooms at another church. So oh. there's yeah. Healing Rooms Victoria, they can um, look up the a website. website. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah. And I'm sure even there are other churches that do provide it, but I'm not aware of yes, uh, too many. Yes, I think there's also a prayer network. They can look up the okay. internet. Mm. But this is wonderful good news for people oh. so they can have better relationships and more healing. And, you, and you've given hope to people who've you know, gone through marriage mm. separation. Well, thank you so much, Maureen. Okay. Wish you all the best till we see you next week. Thank you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Tune in next week. Goodbye and God bless you.